So I, I have to admit that the title probably is a little bit of clickbait, but it's not so much the Panasonic APS-C secret that I want to talk about, rather a way of looking at a camera that sort of uh, maybe makes it a little bit more versatile or cheaper if you really want to do some advanced video with an APS-C or a Super 35 camera. I've been a Micro Four Thirds fan for a while and I recently was about to update to the latest and greatest Micro Four Thirds body, the uh, Panasonic G9. I had a G6 last, uh, sorry, I had a GH6 last year and I wanted the new autofocus system. But when I was looking around at the pricing, I actually managed to find this, which is the uh, Panasonic S52X for the same price that I was about to pay for the G9. And this is a full frame camera. Not only was it the same price, but at that price, I got two lenses along with the body. So I got a the kit zoom, the 20 to 60 kit zoom, and a 85 millimeter 1.8 prime lens. Uh, thrown in with the price of the body, so it didn't cost me anything extra. That made me reconsider uh, if I was going to keep going with the Micro Four Thirds system. And it actually, selling some of my Micro Four Thirds lenses and equipment actually made me be able to put together a full frame kit with the 1.8 lenses that are available for Panasonic, which I really like. They are uh, constant size, more or less the same weight. They all have the same filter dimension. And it makes a really, really nice, easy kit to work with. And I was able to put together that kit quite reasonably. But as I was sort of thinking about that, and as I built my kit, I suddenly realized something else. Now, this body is more or less the same size as the G9 body, even though it's a full frame sensor. And maybe one of the few complaints with this camera system is that when I want to film at 50 frames per second, I have to go down to an APS-C crop or a Super 35 crop. It's no longer full frame. And yet it still has all the other functions. It has and, I, and this camera body has some of the best video functions of any hybrid type camera that I know. And it even has a, a fan built in for it so it doesn't overheat or anything like that. And I suddenly realized that if I was to treat this camera as though it was an APS-C camera, I would get the benefits of having an APS-C camera as compared to a full frame camera. Now, what are the benefits? Well, mainly, it has to do with the lenses. You can pick up cheaper, smaller lenses for the APS-C system than you can for a full frame. So I actually went so far as to build a reasonably cheap full frame system. And what I've managed to get is I have the Sigma 10 to 18 2.8 zoom. As you can see, it's quite a small, handy little zoom with a 67 millimeter filter diameter, which is what I have on all my other lenses. So that's great. And that with the APS-C crop gives me 15 millimeters to 27 or 28 millimeters, uh, 2.8 zoom. So I have a really nice wide uh, zoom lens that covers in, covers mostly what I need in the wide range. And it goes all the way to 15 millimeters. So it's, it's really wide, it's enough for uh, if I want to do any uh, architecture or house stuff. So I have a nice wide lens. It's 2.8, so even though it's an APS-C crop, it lets in a lot of light. And then I needed to complement it with uh, some longer lenses. And I was thinking about maybe getting, I could complement this with the, the Sigma 18 to 50 zoom lens. But I'm not a big fan of zoom lenses and I actually wanted something that let in a bit more light that was a bit brighter. So I ended up getting the 30 millimeter 1.4 and the 56 millimeter 1.4. I've actually had the 56 millimeter before and I've used it on the on my uh, Micro Four Thirds camera and I really like this camera. So I was actually happy to be able to get this for this camera as well. 
I managed to pick up both of these lenses second hand, really cheaply. Uh, so I've managed to build a kit where I've got coverage from 15 uh, in, in uh, 35 millimeter equivalent terms from 15 millimeter to 27 millimeter at 2.8 in a zoom. I then have uh, the equivalent of a 45 millimeter 1.4 and a 80 millimeter 1.4. So with these three lenses, nice, small, compact kit, I can, I really have to say that I could do more or less 90% of what I need to do. Eventually, if I was to do some sort of travel stuff where I need a longer lens, that might be the one thing that would need to complement this. For, but for my average day-to-day uh, -day stuff and most of my travel stuff, this is more than enough. Uh, I could possibly even get by with just two of these lenses on a trip and uh, which ones would depend on what sort of trip I was going on, but th that would really be enough. Nice, compact. Uh, these lenses come with uh, uh, lens hoods, but I've actually got a step-up ring on both of them, so I have 67mm filter diameter on everything. So it actually matches my primes for full frame. So I've now got a APS-C or, or Super 35 uh, camera, video camera, that more or less uh, has every feature I want. The one thing that's missing is that it doesn't have built-in NDs. But apart from that, it's got waveform monitor, I can record RAW, I can re record ProRes RAW, Blackmagic RAW, I can record to a hard drive, I can record ProRes to a hard drive, I can even record ProRes internally. It's got all eye recording. Um, yeah, more or less everything I would ever need, I have in this camera now. And it's actually proven when I've complemented with this kit to be a small and cheap kit. There is no other APS-C camera body, body in the same price class or anywhere near close to the same price class that does the same things. So, and then there's always the option of going full frame. So I can actually go 6K, 3, 2, open gate, full frame with this if I, I just need another lens. So it's a perfect way of uh, getting into this system if that's what you want to do. Thinking about it like this has made me even more happy to get this system. I was worried about one or two things. I wasn't sure how the autofocus was going to work because there are, these are Panasonic lenses, they're Sigma lenses, third party lenses don't always work as well. So I went out and did some focus testing and uh, I only tested it so far using the standard settings that are in the camera. I haven't really optimized anything as yet. And I'm very pleased it worked really well. All of the lenses worked, autofocused, uh, uh, human detection worked really great. And I was oh, more than pleased with the results. So if you want to get started in the Panasonic full frame system, a cheap way into it is actually to start using it as an APS-C camera. This way, I also have the same crop even if I'm doing 25 frames per second, 50 frames per second, or even 100 frames per second, even if at 100 frames per second, I have to go down to full HD rather than 4K. All in all, this is probably the best spec, cheapest APS-C camera or available at the moment, and it just also happens to be full frame.